Welcome to another episode of Profit Partners. I'm here with Sebastian Hertz from Zignify. How are you doing? Thank you very much, David. Welcome. Uh, welcome. Well, I welcome myself by now. Do you see that? No, uh, <laughs> I, I, thank you for having me and welcoming me. That's what I want to say. Doing perfect, doing fine. I hope the same, of course, for you. Yeah, no, great. You know, I've always wanted to like talk to you guys. You know, I first heard about you guys uh, actually at Prosper when I was there in March. Uh, what okay. interested me was three things. One, the name Zignify I thought was phenomenal. Two, the fact really? that you guys gave a, yeah, nice. I mean, I would love to know exactly what Zignify actually signifies uh, <laughs> and why you chose that name. Two, the chopsticks that you guys gave out, phenomenal. And three okay. was this like little tiny pamphlet that talked about, you know, this trip for this convention that was going to happen yeah. in China. And I was, and I, and I remember asking who was at the, uh, I believe it was Yulia at the thing, at the, at the, um, at the booth. And I said to her, you know, is, is this a free trip? Because I would love a free trip to China, to which I was unfortunately told no. <laughs> so let's yeah. start with that. What is, what is Zignify Signify? Let me turn this thing around because that's, I mean, it's a really interesting question. I didn't get this one yet, but what does it sound like to you? That would be really interesting. Now, it may be very embarrassing now for us, but what do you feel by the word Zignify or what, what are you thinking of? Well, to me, I think of signify like you know with an S, and I think that it's something that's significant, and therefore you're you're helping you know companies become I guess significant or important. But you're hired. that's just me. That was like a hundred percent hit. You're hired. Um, I'll I'll tell my boss I'm leaving. Let me just take off my shirt for a second. <laughs> exactly. Hold on. I'll send you my. Um, <laughs> it's uh, my wife has started sourcing. Uh, I think I bring this joke now a little bit for for a few weeks or so. Um, I always say for twenty years, but then I get slapped left and right in the face. Don't make me older than I am. <laughs> no, she's doing sourcing only. Here, here, you you listen to it, babe. Uh, you, she only does sourcing for nineteen years, so not twenty. So she's not as old. Um, but she's been doing this pretty much all her life, um, all her professional life. And um, she came out exactly with the same thing. You know, it was at the time of like, you know, Shopify and Spotify and everything, Fi, Fi, Fi. Um, and exactly, you just said it, Zignify. So it should be something significant. And why significant? Well, make it significant with a Z instead of an S. I think that is the short story behind it. Um, you're smart. No, I, I mean, you look, know I about love the chopsticks. It. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice. as we use them. So, <laughs> so we actually use them. Except for the one that somehow my one-year-old broke. I'll never figure it out because we tried doing exactly what my one-year-old did and how he somehow broke off a chopstick. We still can't figure it out. Clearly, he has Hulk strength. But I will in... promise you, that's what you yeah. told me before uh, the recording. I will take the things. I still have some downstairs. And I'll, I'll smash them on the floor. I want to see what happens. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I don't know how you can break them. Um, and if you're yeah. one-year-old, I mean, it's a, he's, he's a, I don't know if you're the father then. I must be a Hulk. Wow, thanks. I, I really appreciate oh, that. That was bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. You know, just, to, just, you know, look, so your wife doesn't feel bad. I've known mine for, for, for 19 years this September, okay? Uh, and we've only been married 10, you know, this coming June. So 19 years yeah. has been terrible. Don't worry. It doesn't mean that you're old, right? It, it means that you're young at heart. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's what we need. So, uh, so let me ask you this. Tell me a little bit about Zignify. I want to understand more about what you guys do. Because I, I'm very new to Amazon and I went to Prosper like this. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It's not a pretending it's really, you're really new to Amazon. Nice. I'm very new. It's I started a... in January. Not better refunds, okay. just me. Okay, nice. Um, I, this is a, the, of course, those questions we didn't have as well um, quite often. I mean, for once, you do, if you want to sell on Amazon, you do need, of course, products. So you do want to find a potential producer. And um, of course, anybody, and that's what I suggest, anybody who is in the very beginning, go do it on your own. Do it a few times. Do it, you know, until you feel familiar, until that one click in that moment will come in your head. I hope I'm not taking this click away from you right now if I'm telling you. That there will be this one day is like, I shouldn't be spending time on those things, this admin stuff and everything. What I should be focusing is RGAs, revenue generating activities. So I understood how it works. I do know what the effort is and I do know what it takes. So how about somebody else does it or I hire somebody for the team? 
What we for once do is, of course, find manufacturers, um, look at them, do quality control, create, uh, look after mass production, uh, making sure that the quality itself is good, help out with the shipping, um, prepare the shipping, the import and everything. But we don't just find producers. Our target is always to find for the needed quality, the best price. That is why we usually go in, depending on the country, we're looking for about 30 to 60 potential producers go to them, ask for quotations, get the quotations, go through them. And it doesn't even take that long, to be honest. Um, our ladies are, I'd say, quite efficient, very fast at, at doing that for the amount of work that's done. Um, the reason here is to get, of course, the best prices. Imagine you start selling a product right now and the product goes well. And then, uh, you know, it sells 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 times a year. And later you notice, what if? Like the same, you know, for battery funds, what if you would have gotten the money back that's laying there on the streets means what if you would have bought that product for 10 cents cheaper, 50 cents, a dollar, two dollar, five dollar, depending on how expensive it is. Imagine just, I don't know, a dollar cheaper on uh, 50,000 turns a year. That's $50,000 in savings just to do it right. And here's the second thing what we do is for established sellers that we go in and we take for example, the best seller products or all of them, whatever, may, where it makes sense to go in and optimize the prices. Can you guarantee it? No, never can you guarantee that it's possible. But if you haven't checked out the whole market, like all the suppliers and talk to them, or you're maybe not even sure whether you're working with a producer or a trading company, there's so much money that you can find and make more profit without selling a single unit more because you buy for cheaper. The real money is made in purchasing, not in sales. You're probably not. I always say not only in sales because sales is super important. But I guess you heard this phrase before, right? Yeah. No, I have. And, you know, one thing I'd like to ask you is, you know, there are multiple ways of, you know, increasing profitability or increasing, you know, market share or increasing, you know, your revenue because there's a difference between revenue and, and, and profits. But, you know, when it comes to, there's something that you said that was interesting, which is that you make, you do price optimization or, you know, and also you make sure to get, you know, the best price uh, for, you know, for, for, for the creation or for the generation, I guess, of, of the products now or manufacturing the products. That's actually the, you know, the proper term probably. Um, but, you know, there are other ways in addition to that for increasing you know the potential of 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 either saving you know your expenses in order to you know keep your profits up or to increase your profits right due to selling more other you know or other avenues so as part of what you guys do you did mention price optimization do you also do other types of uh of services such as giving what I call advice <laughs> to, you know, to sellers uh, or vendors. And I'm assuming you're not just an Amazon, but with Amazon specifically, right? Amazon charges fees based off of the packaging of the, of the product. And now mind you, for some things, they could be big, they could be small, but yes. if they just decrease them by a little bit, they would be saving more money. Is that, is that like a type of service that you do to help sellers and vendors? It's an awesome question. I like that. Um, Sorry, it took six years to ask the question. <laughs> no, this is really good. I, I, I do enjoy that um, because, yes, I want to show you. Do I have it? Yeah, I guess my camera may have turned with me and you've seen one of our brands over there. Um, but that's, for example, another one of our brands or the first brand. Let's imagine the product earlier wasn't, you know, like that size, whatever it is. And that is actually pretty small for a product, right? Yeah. So we had this, made it also with blisters ourselves as well. And you guys will hate me out there if I say that all of my products, I usually do airship. Yep. Because I, well, for whatever reason, right? The advantage that I have is is uh, I have very small and light products. Um, and sometimes there's such high competition in there where I'm, to be honest, thinking until the last moment, is it worth ordering again? And then I usually go again i could have ordered by c and make it cheaper of course but um, as one example of our own ones the product before was like that large and we figured out hey this is too um large so we had like small blisters in there for five pieces of you know camera covers that's what i just show you like selfie camera covers over here oh wow um, 
doesn't make much sense to go into competition because yes, uh, Far East is on the market as well and underbid any of the prices, of course. But with this one, I was lucky. I had in the box, normal small box, like a low box, I had 250 units. And I thought to myself, let's do that even better. And we had this 250 units, that size, and reduced it to this. Wow. Oops. And this weighs, I think, 1.5 grams. And in the same box, I had a comparison. I put 3,200 units instead of 250 in there. So product, and yes, absolutely. When you check existing products, and very often, I mean, it's, it's quite easy actually to do. Go on Google and find the FBA rate card for your country. And then you'll find out what is the size of everything. And then, you know, it's like, oh my God, okay. That product, um, we're half an inch above the, the rate. So let's go in. And of course we do packaging design as well. Um, find packaging producers uh, as well as find shipping companies, find, uh, out about regulations, certifications that you need to get those certificates and so on. All the things that are needed, shipping, uh, preparation, import, whatever, if you need patent uh, protection or design protection inside China, brand protection, all of those things as well. But yes, and that's very often one of the easiest things to do for um, a seller to also optimize the shipping costs, the storage costs, the freight. And, and, and then in the end, I mean, this then, of course, became a small and light. Um, yeah, helps. that's that's fantastic. I mean, you've saved yourself an insane amount of money then. You know, doing that. If I may give you another example, even yeah, cost of this thing that was like, you know, for the blocker cards or cards, anything that are like inside here, that's a return from Amazon, of course. Thank you, dear customer, for ripping it completely apart. Um, you know, this is like heat. Uh, what is the English word? I don't right now. Heat welded together. So it's like two okay. units, it's a blister on there. And then, you know, the packaging became a bit even more expensive sometimes than the product itself. Huh. And uh, it takes quite some time and it's additional production steps. So we think and look at this as well and say, so what can we do different? Well, in the end right now, that's what it looks like now at the moment. It's a small envelope, half the size, lighter, much cheaper, much easier because yes, it's a paper envelope. And we create them now, by the way, also there, we may give you some hints whether one type product is good enough. Could you actually also offer this in a bundle with two, three, that's two, three, or four products in one pack because maybe a whole family would need it. And uh, as a hint in general, when you do, when you sell out there, just by having the offer that you have several different higher amount units, some people will go for it. I once was in a, in a media um, in, in Germany, one of the big magazines had like a deal of the day, um, got my product in there and said, hold on, hold on, I'm building a landing page with one product in like three hours before going live. Um, I thought to myself, hold on, why? It's something has to do with like a, a, a pouch for keys. Okay. And I was like, why only one? I made a two pack, a three pack and a four pack. The most sold units were the two packs. Then came the one packs. Um, a lot of four packs, hardly any three packs, which was surprising. Um, but the amount that like that there was like at least a doubling, if not a tripling of the revenue in one of the sessions, just by having separate offers. And you can, in worst case, take the product and well, send two of them out if you do it FBM. Very wow. simple. Massive upscaling hack that I think a lot of them, it's not a hack, it's common sense. Yeah. But a lot of them don't really do it yet. I mean, to be honest, I was literally just about to ask, what's your favorite product productivity hack for e-commerce sellers? But you clearly just said it. But uh, if you have another one, I would love to know. Um, and you know, if you got when it comes to sourcing, hacks. tons of them. We have actually even a program or a network where we continuously share hacks in there. It's in German though, uh, but um, sorry. <laughs> were, I'm sure soon going to also share about an, an international one um, that's coming out right now. Um, by the way, it's it's the seller underground. Give them oh. the code, for example, Signify. And then uh, Sean and Seth will know where they come from. And anyway, that's a, a different topic. But when it comes to sourcing, for example, is... The uh, for sure thing about do you best sellers, obviously, is it possible 
or do I know for sure that I have the lowest prices or probably not the lowest prices? Other things is when you do sourcing also on your own, do not, I know it's fast and I know, you know, a lot of the, the not so serious coaches will probably tell you, get two or three proposals. Then you have two or three proposals, the like quotations. You have a high price, a medium price, and a low price. What is the high price going to say? Third quality. That's it. Go in, and if you do it on your own, look for 30 to 60 potential producers. Try to get 5, 8, 10, 12, 15, or maybe 20 valid proposals. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it because then you have the high prices, the medium prices, the low prices. And with this, you have the power. You first of all know what the market price is, the average. And then on the other hand, you do know how you can negotiate one against the other one. This is that will save you a lot of money, whether you do it on your own or we help you do this. Um, that's where money is. And I mean, the hex, I think all the time, if you need more. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll redirect them to you in German. <laughs> yes. So let me, let, let, let's talk about sourcing. Okay. Because that seems to be a real, I mean, it's part of your name. It's literally in the back there, global product sourcing, right? So one, what makes you different from other sourcing companies? And two, mm -hmm. where do you do your sourcing? Mm -hmm. uh, let me answer two first. Um, let me duck a little bit. That's why I usually say global. What I should add in here is like minus North Korea, minus Russia. <laughs> Those are pretty much the two countries we at the moment uh, don't source from. Or to be honest, also Afghanistan, we're not in there really. Um, but you know what I, what I mean, right? Sourcing... It used to be 90% we did sourcing in China before Corona, before everything changed, before, yes, the world talked about nearshoring. Now we only do 40% of the sourcing in China, where we still massively grew. Um, and that is that means we have 15, 16, 17, or 18 ladies or so, I think, in China for doing those 40%, and the rest is rest of the world. And that's anywhere. Um, Vietnam is a strong market. Indonesia is a strong market for Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Thailand, of course, as well. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, Turkey, Eastern Europe, Southeastern Europe, Germany as well. Our second brand, our cosmetics brand is fully made in Germany. But for the Americans, also um, Mexico, South America, or inside the US as well. Um, and what makes us different is, well, I think one of the easiest things is we tell you who the supplier is. And we don't look for two or three suppliers. We look for 30 to 60 potential producers if the market offers that. Put all of them below one another. Give all the contact details so you can directly get in touch with them. We show the prices, uh, the reasons why or why not. We recommend which ones where we say those two, three, maybe four or five um, are the ones that we recommend. Go, um, let's get samples from them. And uh, we don't take a percentage of the order volume. And also not a percentage of the reorder volume. We do it very open, honest, and transparent. And that's what every business we have, we want to build up this way. We charge an old school way based on the hour. And actually we're doing it down to the minute. So we're, if it's 27 minutes, we're not charging 30 minutes and especially not a full hour. Everything's super open, honest, and transparent. And you'll get the contacts. And by doing so many, searching for so many suppliers, which... You can't really do it with any. I maybe somebody can do it with fixed rate uh, quotations. Personally, I don't really think much about competition. Um, I do believe that any other sourcing company out there as well, if they have been in the market for a few years and still survive, they have a reason to be there. They probably also do a good job. Maybe we do it. I'm quite sure we do it differently. But maybe they're cheaper. Maybe they're better. Maybe we're better. Um, again, I am a believer in abundance. And uh, that's why we still try, you know, to make things in a very open, honest, and transparent way. Because we wouldn't, we wouldn't do sourcing for our own products in any other way. I wouldn't give it out to somebody who doesn't tell me who the supplier is and gets all their lifelong uh, commission on that, and just six percent, or just four percent, or just ten percent. That's a lot. So let me let me ask you this then: when it comes to sourcing, right? Lots of companies, especially in e-commerce, they're they're selling. I mean, e-commerce sellers can do whatever they want to do, but I feel like they're trying to sell as many different products as they possibly can. Do you usually recommend them to go with one sourcing agent or like one manufacturer, or to use you know a platoon of manufacturers? 
for their different products. Do you also recommend, you know, that certain uh, products are are with these types of manufacturers versus those type of manufacturers? I mean, what we always, uh, for once, uh, suggest is, of course, try to, if you can, if you can take care of the product security as well, get rid of trading companies in between. They hold their hands open for moving boxes, right? They get big boxes, put them in small and ship them out. Um, so always go to the source. Um, the uh, the um, Sorry, I, I, I got lost in my own thoughts right now. Sure. <laughs> Not a problem. I'm happy to, to, re, to, to restate it. So lots of Amazon sellers or even uh, yes. vendors, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is, of <laughs> course, always good not to only have one supplier, but maybe also a backup supplier. And especially when you have built your products and don't ever, in my suggestion, don't ever make a sudden move completely away from somewhere and drop him and burn the bridges. Because if your new supplier, for example, screws up or it doesn't deliver what he promises, you go back and... Uh, you know, cry for, for help or back for forgiveness. So keep always a good one, a good relationship. And if you switch to a new supplier, do it gently. Another hint or hack or small here, because sometimes you do see product issues only after a certain use of time. Um, if you want to combine the new version with the old version, suggest it, put it under the same parent, but make it two children. Why? Because in worst case, if quality number one at two, the new one would be worse um, and that, you know, it would destroy your reviews. All of a sudden something happens, you know, I mean, anybody who has built products, they know there's something coming sometime unexpectedly um, or even like, you know, a second, don't fully switch out uh, or just don't dump it into the same in bin. And um, I would not necessarily recommend unless you can handle just before you, I had a call with a guy who has like 25 uh, products, 120 units in, or in, in, in variations in total. And those 25 uh, parent products, he works with 20 suppliers where it's, uh, he says himself, it's a headache. It's, it's so much, I wow. mean, dealing with 20 different companies. So if you can, and you're building a brand, not only cash flow products, which are like all different units, all scattered across Amazon, but if it's something related in somewhere and you have a trusted partner, a trusted supplier, why wouldn't you go in and purchase additional products from him? And maybe even if it's too difficult, if you trust that guy, that he would then, you know, get some additional units if you do a gift set or so from somewhere else and uh, consolidate it in his place. Um, any of the big companies out there, I mean, they have a target, right? They don't want to have 50,000 suppliers. They don't want to order from 50,000 suppliers. That's why they also work with distributors. Those distributors, they place whatever on order and they will then order again from 20 different companies. So unless you want to make it unnecessarily complex, <laughs> try to reduce it to a fewer suppliers. But the bigger and bigger you get, I mean, I can tell you one of the things where I was shocked when I've seen one of the aggregators who's, I think, having big issues or not even on the market anymore. Back then I talked mm. to somebody who was fresh from university I'm um, talking about sourcing for them. And the person was uh, responsible for five brands, but not only for sourcing, for listings, for images. And I'm not talking about five products. I'm talking about five brands, everything responsible for fresh from university, no idea about um, Amazon really. And I was like, how are you supposed to do that? Impossible. The sourcing alone would be impossible to do this for one person. So let's, as a consumer, you know, I can buy something. We'll, we'll just stick with Amazon just because I'm with Amazon, you're with Amazon, and a bunch of others, obviously, but I'm mostly with Amazon, and I'm familiar with Amazon because I'm not familiar with any other platform. But we'll also stick with Amazon just because consumer-wise, as a consumer, one of the wonderful things about e-commerce is that it's it, it's on the internet. You know, you, you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything. You just sit at home, buy your product, you don't like it, you return it, you're happy, it was torn, oh, hey, I want a replacement. There's a lot of different things and there's a lot of advantages as a you know, consumer in order to get you know, your product and you're happy, it, it to eventually become happy, hopefully you're happy with your materialistic lifestyle. With when it comes to as a, now you're a seller or a vendor mm -hmm. and you need to get those products as inventory. You, know, you gotta get those units. And you may not necessarily be right next door to that, you know, to that factory, to that manufacturer. How, what do you guys do to help the uh, e-commerce sellers 
uh, and vendors to, you know, ensure that they're getting their products, their quality, you know, it's quality. It's, you know, that they're getting the right ones that if they're damaged, hey, like, I want new stuff. Oh, you gave me the wrong color. What do, what do you guys do to solve issues that these providers, these sellers and vendors, um, you know, are experiencing or could be experiencing? That's what quality control is for. That's why you go into factories and you check the products there locally in the factory, very elegantly stepping over the boxes that they put well sorted in front of you and say, I want that box, this box, and that box. Please get them for me. And then you start analyzing it. We are a 100% remote team and our team is growing there where more and more production happens. Means our ladies, it's, uh, I always say our ladies because I'm the only guy in the company. <laughs> uh, we grew up two and a half years, my wife and me. I mean, she's been doing sourcing uh, again for a long time, 19 years, not 20. Um, and um, we've built it now in the last two and a half years to 60 plus employees, all wow. women. It happened. Um we had men as well. I get this question very often. So it's shortened down. No, it's not on purpose. But I think by now the ladies want to have female colleagues. So maybe it becomes a purpose. I don't know. Um, but the team is there. Like in China, we have like the 15, 16, 17, 18 ladies at the moment. I, I need to ask HR. Um, and on the other um, countries, in order to be close to the factories, to go in there and check the quality. And that's why... Uh, for any of the beginners, maybe as well, I mean, experts or, or intermediate and advanced sellers would know that, do never make the final payment, make a down payment and don't ever make the final payment before having checked the products. That's where quality con control comes in. If they fail the quality control, you don't pay the money. Then they have to rework it and only then you pay the money. Um, very, very important thing. That's uh, And don't do me the favor, everybody check samples, right? Yeah. Small anecdote, uh, there was a seller who came to us nearly crying um, said, Sebastian, Sebastian, I think I've done a mistake. And uh, he obviously did a mistake. Uh, <laughs> samples and got, you know, like small pouches. It was three samples. Um, I feel horribly sorry for that guy. But um, that's that's a big learning you also do as an, as an entrepreneur. And he ordered the product, um, picked sample two, let's say. Um, and went through production, went through all through pri uh, shipping, packaging, sorry, packaging, shipping, import into Germany, into the warehouse, everything there through bureaucracy, gone through the customs and all paperwork done. He opens the container, opens the, the master card and looks into the product and notice like, that doesn't look like sample number two. $100,000 ordered and didn't do a quality control of the production. Believe that the supplier said, oh, but you showed me sample number two, so you can do it. Fine. The later end of the story, I was thinking a little bit what has happened, because that's also a common thing by some of the suppliers, is that they send you samples, but it doesn't mean that they produce them. They order samples from another factory to say, oh, we can do that. You know, bah. let's just order them, and we order them as samples and give them to him, because he's going to order for $100,000. So uh, place them, um, show the samples, but they didn't really produce it. They tried to produce it. It just didn't look that way. So they tried, but they failed. And that is something that you easily discover when you do a quality control before you send money. Because when you send money and everything is over there, what's the motivation for the supplier to still fix problems or start production new again and throw everything away he's done? It's nearly zero. You know, it's actually funny you're mentioning this. It's like, you know, my I, my uncle Dave, who I'm actually named after, uh, <laughs> um, he, you know, he he works, it ran, you know, I don't fully know the, the whole spiel, but basically, uh, a, you know, works with like, you know, toys and stuff. And he has a lot of manufacturers that he works with, you know, in the, you know, mostly in like the Asian market. And he also, you know, he's based in Germany and Italy and Hong Kong. And he, you know, I, when he came and visited me, he actually... It was on call with one of his colleagues who was in uh, I don't remember where he was he was I, I think he was I think he was in China um, I think he was in China and basically you know the the sample that they had gotten was completely out of spec 
you know, and they were supposed to roll out like the next, you know, day or two. And he was like, you know, you have to get, you have to go be there first thing in the morning. You know, it's like, it's one of those things that, you know, drives people crazy when it comes to, you know, as, as, as a seller, right. You're, you're trying to provide these products, you know, what, what are, what are other challenges that sellers just, or even you, you know, when you first started, like a could experience that, you know, that, that they just aren't going to expect or that you never expected. Um, and you know, what tips do you have slash how do you solve it slash should they just hire you <laughs> so you don't give away the secrets? A lot of it. I mean, you heard of Murphy's law, right? Yes. <laughs> can go wrong, will go wrong. And I mean, it can be a simple thing. It can be stuck at customs. Customs may, like we also imported a product over here to Europe, which was a non-working sample, also declared as this one. Customs doesn't see it. Customs doesn't believe it. Customs wants to have CE certificate. It was like, guys, it's a non-working sample. No need. We're checking this here right now. Um, and whatever else, then another example could be that product lays uh, then with the customs and we ask customs, please send it back and customs will just, you know, they are busy with other things. And just forget about the parcel. It's just sending there somewhere. Um, and it's just, you know, that took like three or four weeks to get it out of customs to ship it back. Of course, some of the customers don't believe it, but it's like, well, go deal with customs, go deal with anybody that are supposed to do something which is not the ordinary business means, for example, sending stuff back. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you another example. My wife, uh, she just landed in Singapore and she's like, well, where's my luggage? Well, she checked in the luggage or so she thought she gave it in a, to, can I blame our German Lufthansa? Because sorry, you guys, you <laughs> but I think not. And um, I think it was a different airline that she flew with, but um Blame whichever one you hate. <laughs> no, it's like, you know, everybody deserves, of course, a second chance. We're still flying Lufthansa. And us Germans, we're world champions and complaining anyhow. So, you know. Um, and she hands over the luggage and the lady over there is chatting with another lady and all of those things. And she was thinking, was like, why are you chatting? I mean, please pay some respect to me. I'm right now a customer. I would like to have my boarding ticket. She goes off and then she arrives in Singapore and says, where's my luggage? Check with the airlines. They said, there's no luggage. Oh. What do you mean there's no luggage? I handed it in. The lady, most likely what we feel right now is she forgot to put uh, the wrapping uh, around the, 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 the tag and it never arrived. So now they're figuring out. And now the next thing comes. Another example is, you know, asking now in Singapore, the airlines saying, oh, yeah, it's here in Singapore. And it's like, what? It's like three times you confirmed that it's in Frankfurt. And then asking again, it's like, oh, yeah, no, no, uh, it's in Frankfurt. Yes. Uh, no, we don't actually know where it is. So all those things may happen. There are people in between and things get lost. And the most common thing is not the automation of the belts and everything running, you know, scanning the tax and everything. It's people. It's people. Um, other things that may happen, like uh, what comes to my mind is, for example, a nicely produced wooden product, quality control done. But the supplier, for example, afterwards wraps it, for example, in uh, what is it called? Cell cellophane or cell yeah, cellophane. The paper? Cellophane it is in English, right? Uh, wraps it in there, ships it over, it's in the container, and then it comes on and, well, it wasn't solidly dried or it got some moisturized, it opened up and it's molded after a year because uh, uh, humidity came in. Such things could also, and some of those things you don't discover. One of my first products, I shouldn't say that too loud because back then I really did not know about anything about product security and electronic products and whatsoever. It was USB LED. I mean, I have, still haven't seen them over here. That was in 2014 in China. I got USB cables that had LEDs inside. So whenever you plug them in, they light up. I was like, that's an awesome product. Wow, love it. But I'd order it, start shipping. Boom, 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 boom. Hundreds of units sold. And then all of a sudden, you know, it was like two, three weeks in. It's like the LEDs go dead. And it was like, uh? and you know, those are all the surprises that may come after long-term use. And I mean, you know, guess why? When you go to Ikea, sometimes you see the Poang chair, or in Europe it's called Poang, where they like, you know, pressure uh, the uh, the seat the whole time to move it. That may break after whatever something, a screw may come loose somewhere. Anything can go wrong. Be prepared for it. And in the life of an entrepreneur, you will fall, you will high, high ups and downs all the time, all the time. Um, and you will fall. But the most important thing is you need to get up one more time. Get up and keep walking. The more you walk, the less you fall. Wow. 
you know, I actually had three other questions I wanted to ask, but that was like a perfect ending. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't want to waste the ending, but I'd rather, but it's really important to ask these questions, you know, we're very limited on time. So if you could just bear with me, me, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go through this super fast. All right. One, because you guys are sourcing globally and you have it yes. literally in your background globally, one, what do you guys do, you know, with regards to global expansion, right? Companies are, you know, trying to get around the world so that, you know, they get more clients. Cause sometimes you kind of just thought that you necessarily plateau, but you gotta, you need to find more ways of making more money. And sometimes that means global expansion, Ex global expansion. So how do you help with that? Uh, and I mean, you know what, let's just go with that. We'll see what happens. For once nearshoring, I mean, put the products closer to where you're selling. And secondly, on the other hand, one of the hints that I would give, this is nothing that we do directly ourselves is, but when you call yourself an Amazon seller, you got, in my opinion, a little bit of an issue. We're brand builders, most of the cases. Amazon is one channel. Please wake up and please open up and say, you know what, stationary retail, um, brick and mortar and or Shopify should also be markets to consider. Does it help? We're running out of time. Question number two, hit me. Yeah, let's go. I, that was literally my next question. Do you only work with e-commerce, you know, no. uh, sellers or vendors, or do you also work with other established, you know, or coming, you know, established companies? Yes, for sure. I mean, where Amazon itself is our customer. We do sourcing for Amazon's own brands outside of China, but we also do work with aggregators, small sellers, large sellers. We do for some of the full service agencies, we do the background sourcing. Um, but at the same time, we're also into industrial um, production or my, my I'm an electrical engineer by university, stayed with a Fortune 500 company for 12 years. So we do um, when it comes to like shortage sourcing, for example, when computer chips or yep. Dragon, uh, dragon train loads, wagon loads of hydrochloric acid. They asked us how many bodies do you want to dissolve? We was like, none. Our main customer is one of the large chemical companies. So also that we do. Okay. Um, by the way, you could, you could, you could do things by dragon. I'm fine with that. <laughs> dragon. Yeah, why not? Okay. What is one question I did not ask or one thing that you would like to say, you know, before we end this call? I, just to give another hint or just another hack where, where whatever you, you want i don't care like what's something you wish i asked you know and 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 how would you have answered that question okay i should place that this i'm sorry for going actually so fast i was really trying to rush through the three questions what is the question that you would have asked me and how would i like to answer that um wow that's a i, I need some blood sugar um, but it's a good one. <laughs> Just order on Amazon. I'm sure they'll get it to you within two minutes. Maybe one of the life models or so that you have. And I do believe, for example, so here's a shout out once again to Bob Burke, the go-giver. I read that book, which is all about, you know, giving and helping other people. Um, and I took this book and I finally understood myself a lot better. It is money, I think, is not really a great motivation. I'm not a person who really runs after that. But when you want to do something that you want to do from the heart, and or help people connect people that's maybe why they call me the connector of the e-commerce or so um connect the people help them out you know things will come back many fold just don't expect it and if not you will go to sleep with a very good feeling you've done something good